Good morning. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Welcome to another in Sirtrek series of informational webinars related to the complex world of NERC regulatory compliance. So our title and topic of the webinar today is, are you ready for your NERC audit? Now, if you don't have one on your calendar, you probably will soon. And if you've been through an audit, you know it can be a stressful event. So our goal today is is to help guide you through the experience. My name is Chip Perkins and I'm your host for today's webinar. Our presenter today is Holly Haynes and Holly is the operations manager of our Office of NERC Compliance here at Sirtrek. She is responsible for managing all our technical experts in NERC regulatory compliance. With respect to an agenda, I'm just gonna take a couple of moments to speak about Sirtrek in case you don't know about us. And we're gonna spend most of our time talking about what we all need to do to get ready for our next NERC audit. Sirtrek has been in business for over 30 years. We were founded in 1988, and we are regulatory compliance experts that help utilities and other major companies manage the regulatory process to their advantage. We have more than 60 employees and another 65 associates, so we have a substantial amount of experience available to us. Our employees have more than 1,200 cumulative years of regulatory and industry experience, and we have been doing NERC compliance since the standards were initiated back in late 2006. We also are a state-of-the-art online technology provider. We have substantial IT and cybersecurity capabilities. We manage over four terabytes of industry regulatory data, and we have some really cool online applications to make your life a lot easier. We have contracts with all U.S. nuclear utilities, and we have clients in every NERC region in North America. So just to paint a little bit of the picture for Sirtrek, we are actually ISO 27001 certified. ISO 27001 is an internationally recognized standard that encompasses a suite of best practices. And through this suite of best practices, an organization such as Sirtrek identifies, analyzes, and sets up policies and procedures to address its business risks, including cyber, and physical security. And that certification is obtained and maintained through an ongoing third party audit. And we have that uh, audit conducted each year. The, this ISO certification gives you the confidence that your data and security are all protected with Sirtrek. And as a companion to that, we also have gone through a SOC 2 type two examination and the scope of document management and regulatory services has been examined against trust services principles, that is security, availability, and confidentiality. So there is a broad range of aspects of our business operation that have been examined and determined to meet fairly rigorous standards. And our company is committed to maintaining or exceeding those levels of performance and therefore, we will continue to get a SOC 2 Type 2 examination each year in the future. So that just paints a little bit of the picture of Sirtrek and who we are. And now I want to turn it over to Holly Haynes, who's going to talk to us about, are you ready for your NERC audit? Holly? All right. Good morning, everybody. As Chip said, my name is Holly Haynes, and I'm the Office of NERC Compliance Operations Manager here at Sirtrek. So we believe that there are five key steps to prepare for your next NERC audit. The first step is to identify the standards and requirements that may be included. To do this, you'll first want to identify the NERC ERO areas of focus for the year of your audit. So for this year of 2020, you'll want to pull the 2020 ERO Enterprise Compliance Monitoring and Enforcement Program Implementation Plan. The NERC CMEP for 2020, this document includes a list of the ERO's area of focus that includes the standards the regions will most likely look at, including the requirements. Next, look at your entity's high impact areas of focus 
So to do this, you'll want to look at your inherent risk assessment, the IRA. Most entities have completed an IRA by now. However, uh, if you have not completed one, before your next audit, this most likely will be included in your audit package by the region. The IRA helps refine the scope of the audit. We suggest looking at those areas that pose the most risk to the bulk power system according to your IRA. These standards should be included in the initial assessment. And last, definitely you'll need to look at any past compliance issues, including any self-reports, violations from the past, and any mitigation plans. You'll need to look at any issues going back to your last audit. Step two includes understanding the different types of evidence that auditors will want to see. So the first type are your policies and procedures. Policies and procedures are the documentation that provides evidence you have processes in place that proves how you meet the standard. The second type includes evidence that you followed those processes that you have in place. So examples can be screenshots, reports, training records, things like that, that prove that you are following those processes and actually meet the intent of the standard and requirements. So an actual example here would be evidence of your investigation into the operation of protection system for PRC4, as well as the MIDAS submittals, misoperation reports if you need to do that, so on and so forth. And then last is what we like to call back pocket evidence. And this is evidence that further solidifies you meet the compliance. Maybe you have additional engineering reports, additional training records, things like that, whatever it is. So you don't always want to give everything away right up front, but the goal here is to give the auditors exactly what they ask for and enough that proves you are compliant to ensure additional data requests aren't asked for down the road, but you have something in your back pocket that can prove your case is great. Step three is the development of your actual audit packages. And what I mean by that is the development of your RSL narratives and pulling your evidence together. So for the list of standards that you developed from your assessment in step one, you'll want to develop the RSL narrative first. And your RSL narrative needs to first and foremost most explain the process and processes you use to meet those requirements. Typically, you lean on your procedures for this. However, if for some reason your procedure doesn't adequately explain the process you use to meet the standard, then explain your process in detail in the RSL. The goal here is to explain to the auditor what you do um, to meet the requirement. And then you want to guide the auditor through the evidence that you're providing in your package. So with that said, throughout your narrative, make sure you point your auditor to the piece of evidence you want him or her to look at. Don't just list the evidence and expect them to understand what you're sending. Be very specific and guide them through what you're providing. We also suggest that you describe any tools that you use to meet compliance. Internal controls are extremely important and the auditors love to know what you're doing to use them. So this is extremely helpful. Step three, also a part of this, part of preparing for your audit includes ensuring that you are prepared for any data request. And you can be assured that every audit will include the initial request for your SIP BES assets, as well as PRC5 protection system equipment list with maintenance and test records, and then your FAC8 BES facilities and their associated ratings. Those are always going to be included. So we highly recommend that you get these prepared for before your audit notification letter because you're not going to have a lot of time. So then when you get that audit notification letter and those templates, you can simply copy and paste those into the regional templates or the NERC templates that come in that notification package. So don't wait till the last minute to get these together because it's extremely timely. And then also remember, if you have an on-site audit, the auditors are going to want to visit those control rooms, you know, substations, generation facilities, and operation centers. So be prepared for that. All right, step four. This includes preparing for any non-compliance findings. Hopefully you don't have anything as you prepare, and you don't have anything that you find along the way. But if you did, it's highly, highly encouraged that you report those findings via the self-report process. You need to do this before you receive that audit notification letter. 
so that those findings are not included in your audit. Remember, it's better to self-report instances of noncompliance so that they're not found during the audit. It's much better. They actually encourage the self-report process. And step five, this is the last step in the process for those that have any on-site audits. However, this can be used for an off-site audit as well. We'd recommend that you conduct a mock audit prior to your official audit. You should conduct this mock audit much like the real thing, as much as you can. And what I mean by this is that you stage real interviews, conduct question and answer sessions, even go through an RSAL data request phase. There are outside consultants that can help you do this, that specialize in this. We also recommend that you conduct internal meetings for those that are going to be interviewed for preparation. For example, your operators that are going to be asked questions during the, the actual on-site audit. Remember to only answer the questions being asked and only refer to the evidence that you provided. Be prepared, prepare your people, set them up for success, walk them through the questions that are going to be asked. They, they might not be as prepared as you think they will be. We also recommend that you prepare for the site. Well, obviously, general cleanliness is, is important. So the last thing that I want to mention here, just a few general observations. First, in our opinion, the auditors are not really there to violate you. Again, that's our opinion. They don't want to find areas of noncompliance. They, they generally want to, to help you through the process. Understand that the standards are open to interpretation. So there may be areas of disagreements there along the way. Also, I kind of really want to stress this. Don't be lazy in your RSL narratives as they can be heavily reduced or they can heavily reduce the amount of data requests along the way. The more you put in that RSL, the better off you are because you know there are a number of data requests after the fact. So the more you put in that, the better off you are. It is also very important that you are consistent in how you organize your evidence across the standards. This really helps the auditors. And then also, we're all human in this process, so just be polite and courteous throughout the entire audit. This will really help the process as well. And then the last thing, it's highly encouraged that you start preparing as early as possible. Give yourself ample time to look for those errors, find old documentation, and self-report if need be. I just want to mention that CERTREC is your NERC regulatory compliance expert. We have years of experience with all aspects of meeting the NERC uh, compliance standards, and so we're prepared to help. We have uh, more than 10 years of experience going through or managing or handling audits, and we can provide expert help with your internal assessments or your mock audits, and even provide support during the audit itself or help with mitigation during the audit. There's gonna be issues that come up during the audit. They're gonna raise questions, and it is often just helpful to have someone alongside who's been through that, can help guide you through uh, when to take a stand and when to go ahead and take action. And sometimes, as has often been recommended, it's good to actually, in a sense, put off the issue. In other words, ask the auditor if perhaps we can get together again in two weeks. You want to take a step back, do some research, look at things a little more carefully. Can we talk about this again in seven or 10 days or two weeks? A lot of times what that does is take away the intensity of the moment and the, the energy of the moment, allows everybody to gain a little bit greater perspective. So we are here and we can help reduce your headaches and anxiety. We have electronic tools that can help organize and prepare for your audits, such as dynamic RSAWs. We know how to conduct mock audits. If anybody's looking for that ERO NERC CMAP, it's out on the NERC website on the One Stop Shop page under Implementation Plan. That's a pretty helpful document. All right, thank you. And if we can provide you help or if you have questions, our contact information is there on the screen. Again, this is Chip Perkins, and my colleague Holly Haynes was our presenter today. We just want to thank you for giving us your time and attention. So have a great day. Thank you very much. And that's the end of our seminar today.